Well hello people, and welcome back to part 20 of Thessia, our Australia inspired build. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And it is part 20, so the second of the public save files is now available down below if you want to come play in Thessia. And a uh, big thanks for all of the support during our live stream last week. We had a lot of in-section marking tool fun around our main square, which of course has now been renamed into uh, Morinth Square as well. They were all suggestions, but yeah, loads of fun. Also detailing, we're glad you enjoyed it. We've also worked in the cathedral into the downtown as well, taking a little trip into uh, downtown Adelaide. We've nearly got an exact street replica here, actually, of what happens in Adelaide. Uh, very cool, very cool. So thank you all for supporting it. Glad you guys enjoyed the live stream so much, and there certainly will be plenty more of them now the downtown project has begun, because there's so much to do. But in today's episode, we are going to have a lot of fun with parks and green space, actually, because we're going to focus on wrapping our central BD, I guess, uh, up with green belt, okay? At least up to probably here will be the cutoff point because I want to do something here with the transport hub and the stadium build, which will probably be next week, I imagine. Uh, and then all this waterfront bit I want to be relatively Melbourne inspired. So today we're going to focus on these little areas around. I also want to get trams flowing today too, and possibly the first metro, because I think we're going to come down and develop some spices out the front of our ferry terminal here today as well. It should be a lot of fun. Let's surround our downtown with Greenbelt and city skyline, shall we? For today's episode, of course, we are taking heavy inspiration from Adelaide's Greenbelt and just need to make sure that the belt is green, first of all. So we want to use our resource service painter so we can basically remove all the oil texture from this land. So a lot of people have been asking, why is Thessia so brown? <laughs> and it's because of the oil texture here. Uh, I don't want to remove all of it. I do actually kind of like the kind of drier, more parched grass look, especially when we're in a tropical build. I think it's quite appropriate. And we'll also remove a little bit of it up here as well. Because I want to do a homage, I guess, to the King's Park Botanical Garden in uh, Perth on this space here on the hillside. Get a bit of a war memorial uh, looking out over the town. Should be quite a lot of fun, I think. So that's something to look forward to. So in Adelaide we are seeing a lot of cricket pitches, in fact they're just crammed into each other, thrown in side by side, so we'll definitely get a lot of cricket in here. And I think as a homage to our wonderful Patreon subscribers, we're going to name uh, each of these cricket fields after an oval based in their name, basically. Uh, so we'll start at the first one, which we already had placed from our Road Network Frame episode. I'm just going to keep this one pretty simple. We're going to have some nice ideas today. It's going to be a very chill episode, you know, we're not playing with towers or road frames or traffic manager, anything serious. It's just going to be a lot of chill green space to decorate around a downtown, which is going to be such a unique look, isn't it? Because I don't think I've seen a city that's like Adelaide, this huge business district surrounded by green space. It's very unique, very fun. And then we're going to name this first field uh, after our highest paying patron. And he's been around for a very, very long time indeed. And this is going to be the Joshua T. Oh, well, thank you so much for all your support, Joshua, our top donating patron of all time. Insane support. Really appreciate it, mate. So I hope you enjoy the Joshua T. Oh, well, named after your beautiful self. We're moving on to the next square now. Uh, again, we're going to keep doing quite a lot of sports today. It's going to be very much the theme of the episode, I think. Uh, so we've actually got a little bit of university demand. So I'm going to use this as an excuse to include, yet again, another campus asset. And I think that the Liberal Arts Auditorium is actually going to be a really good shout here. So we'll grab it from our University tab and we'll say Auditorium, this one here is thing, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Also delete our pathways too. And we'll have this up on the corner. Now we are playing with different terrain heights here. So when we're playing with larger buildings, we want to make sure that Everyone's at the same node height, something like that should be relatively acceptable, I think. Also do a little bit of terraforming here as well. It might not look much at the minute, but when we want everything to be on the same playing field, it will matter. So we'll have that there, and then I think we'll grab another bad peanut field. Let's go for Suburban Cricket Pitch. We'll have this here. That's going to be great. Bit of finagling required to move it, I think. I think we'll also pop this one a little bit further into the corner as well. A little bit closer up towards the road too. Something like that should be pretty good. And then we'll grab a little bit of car park in here too. Go for a classic 16 meter. Poorly maintained. We'll throw that in there. And then some choice car park on the end of it too. And again we can just decorate it with larger oaky looking trees. 
and then we'll also have one of our amazing new custom assets in here as well. So big shout out to the beautiful scope for this. It's made as many billboards before, but now we have uh, Coco's Outback, <laughs> which is just incredible. How cool is that? So he made um, a billboard for this, which we haven't used yet. But uh, we now have Coco's Outback. So recently visited Amsterdam, for those that don't know, and posted a sign on Discord of Coco's Outback that has uh, lousy food and warm beer, <laughs> which is perfect. So we also have the billboard, again, by scope. So as you arrive into the Thessia CBD, now you hit a advert for Coco's Outback, lousy food and warm beer. So to have a custom Aussie pub in Thessia is absolutely amazing. So thank you so much for that scope. Great asset, dude. <laughs> absolutely fabulous, isn't it? Look at that. So I'll have this here so you can, you know, sit on the bench and watch a game of cricket go on. The auditorium over there as well. Really nice spaces starting to develop here already, isn't there? So please show some love down for Scope in the comments for that new billboard. We'll also have another custom asset to show off as well from uh, Beefcake and Terry later on in the video when we get down towards the ferry terminal. But again, pretty simple. Choice buildings, appropriate when needed. A pub and a bit, more, a bit of cricket. Classic Aussie CBD, I think, isn't it? We're going to be happy with this one. Uh, bits of surface painter where needed. Okay. And we're looking forward to today's episode, you know. Not playing with anything horrifically intimidating or majorly modded, just a bit of quality of life improvements or some detailing that we need to make. Everyone's going to have an absolutely fantastic time, we hope. So, grid number two down. Another bit of cricket with... Uh, that also needs to be renamed as well, actually, to uh, our second highest supporter patron of all time, which is going to be... Kendai Oval. So thank you so much for all of your support, Kendai. Been around since the Palavan days. Really appreciate it. Thank you for all the patron support, my friend. So the next sort of design that we do see here in Adelaide is actually a massive graveyard. Uh, and I'd love to respect this in order to help provide a little bit of death care functionality uh, for downtown Thessia, of course. So I'd like to use some of the pedestrian pathways here. Um, we're going to use node controller and we're actually going to shrink these down to about half the size. So we want to find our blue node and let's go for a 50% stretch in this case. Then we will do this with each of the nodes. Now I won't make you sit through this whole thing during the rest of the setup, but I'll at least show off the concept right here. But just using node controller to reduce the stretch of the appropriate node down to 50%. And then this is going to essentially you know, half the width of our pedestrian road, isn't it? Which is very nice, a little bit fancy. Now let's use a choice tree for this one. What's this one called? Silky Oak seems like a good idea to me. We'll have this here, okay? That's not too bad for right now. So we want to use our realistic working cemeteries for this. And again, we can hop into Street View in Adelaide and scout out fencing and all the little detail and intricacies that we can make use of here. But as a general concept, we'll place two of our graveyards here. And then we will duplicate them, spin them around and throw them back to back. Just like that. And then let's grab more of that pedestrian pathway. I think I'm happy with sandstone. Maybe want to use another one? No, I think sandstone will be okay, won't it? Uh, and then let's feed that all the way through now to the opposite side. Again, we want to do that node controller trick to 50%, not 500. <laughs> that would not be an appropriate design. Are you okay? Do you need to? There we go, 50% is what we want. Uh, and then this one also stretch as well to 50 I think it's just going to narrow everything down for us, isn't it? And uh, I think we can afford a little bit of overlap here. Not that it's something you'd really notice, I don't think, anyway, to be honest. Got these two back ones here. Move them off the pathway a little bit. And I don't think I mind the pedestrian pathway cutting across here, either. I think that's quite nice. I think, I think we'll keep that, actually. So, now we have this, which is great. And we can essentially just now duplicate these uh, death care buildings as graveyards to fill our cemetery space that we see in Adelaide to function something like this. Now we won't need death care for a very long time if ever again actually. Uh, now there's another build I'd like to use here that's going to be pretty appropriate rather than a repurposing and that's actually going to be the groundskeeper unit from the campus stuff. So I'm going to continue to paint my campus area right over this way. Just over here for right now okay. And we'll get a bit of car parking in here. Let's go for I think we'll stick with this one-sided stuff. It's, made, it's doing a pretty good job for us, isn't it? 
So let's bring it out on a straight angle, bit of road length in there too. Let's hit a guideline and a curve function too here. Let's go for none of these. There we go, that'll do. And then let's go ahead and grab that groundskeeper asset now. So I think this would be perfect for actually featuring in a graveyard. It's essentially going to be, you know, graveyard groundskeeping. And we should be able to place this here actually without much trouble. Yeah, let's have it like that. Now we could actually continue the pedestrian pathway through there. It's going to probably make the most amount of sense, isn't it? Again, with a 50% stretch on the appropriate nodes where needed. Yeah, so we have something like that. That's pretty good, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, then I want to close my offset here as well. Yeah, so we get some car parking on this road here as well in a second. But that pretty much achieves the vibe, doesn't it? I think I'm going to enjoy that. Now we have a groundskeeper for our graveyard. And of course, these guys are going to want a pedestrian service point as well. So let's have a look at that while we're here. Let's go for small pedestrian area service point. And then we'll paint that pedestrian area out just over this road here where our graveyards need it. Cool. And we can probably blend that into the build as well, actually, I think, here today. Have those props exposed to the groundskeeper probably makes them a little more appropriate. Again, if not some heights that just need to be changed and maintained a little bit so we're not quite as gnarly as that. Plus it's come down to the same height as this one here. There we go. And then we'll move that over to the corner as well. And then I think certainly some larger choice trees in and around the graves is going to be a very welcome addition. See if we can pick up some of our favourites here. Go for some of these iron barks as well. Very dramatic trees, aren't they, those ones? A couple of split trunks in there as well. Leafy tree, and then hopefully before we know it, we'll get some fencing around this in our detailing time lapse. But we'll have a... Nice downtown graveyard that Adelaide boasts to essentially service all the dead. <laughs> There's a lot of death care facility here uh, for, from a city's perspective, but from a detailing view, it's uh, very welcome, isn't it? So this is the bonus of like taking inspiration from a particular part of the world. You just, I'd have never put a graveyard here, you know, without seeing it in Adelaide. So happy with that. And that will definitely continue our graveyard pattern uh, over this way uh, as well during our detailing time lapse. But... As a proof of concept, I'm pretty happy with a green belt graveyard to sit within the downtown. So now we arrive at this one here, this kind of corner grid, and I think, again, taking inspiration from Adelaide, as we go for a bit of a multi-sport complex here. So certainly want quite a few tennis courts, so let's see what we're looking like with positionings. If we start piecing some of these back to back, how far can we get away without moving these away from the road? Then we'll worry about providing exact road connections and terrain configuration in a second so we don't lose this actual decal of the tennis court. So I think we'll use a bit of parking lot service road here to uh, obviously provide a bit of parking for our sports guests here. And we'll come into the grid. We'll have this road here and then we'll bring up the service road so that angle snap off as well. Uh, four units. So what are we here? Six and then four. And then we'll switch over to our car parking. We'll have this come right up into the corner by what was that eight units we'll repeat that again connect that over there and then classic no controller trick we just want to turn this into a bend and then sharpen the offset so it closes up together and we'll obviously get our car parking down there but i think what would be nice here because again adelaide is super green so let's paint this area out with a little bit of dirt and i think once we've got a little bit of dirt between the road in the car park just a gentle tree lining in between is going to be more than welcome and this will also help us decorate this street corner as well as it grows out in today's episode otherwise that's uh that's not too bad so we can see here the nodes at this point are going to start giving us a little bit of grief which we need to sort out now we've got our parking arranged we can bring these uh, tennis courts now down to sit where we'd like them to Something like that should be acceptable for me. Go ahead and duplicate up a couple of these tennis courts because there's quite a few of them knocking about. I'll see delete these two first of all and uh, we'll bring the pathway through this because there was quite a lot of people 
uh, walking around all these little vanilla uh, paths we had in place. So if the AI is going to enjoy them, then I'd quite like to maintain them. So we'll have that in there. And then let's grab two more tennis courts. We'll duplicate them the side of the pathway there. So let's we'll push this terrain up as well because it is affecting the decal of the tennis courts, which we don't want to happen. So we'll have that in there. We'll worry about that road connection in a second. So I think I know what we want. The healthcare assets would work nicely here. And community pool is probably going to be one of the best shouts, I think. So we'll have this in here. Align it to whichever angles we need and want, of course. They're going to be pretty happy with that. Not horrendously ugly, is it? I don't think. Yeah, got my little community pool here. Uh, and then we will grab uh, some of that service road. And then what we want to do is just feed it up to this one here. So we can keep that tennis court connected. And then a little bit of service painting now just to fill out those gaps that have developed between the assets. Although without it coming over the wrong side of the road would be great. And then we'll try and keep this pathway going wherever possible. I do want to come on to just an angle snap here though. Okay, got lots of people walking here. And I'd also love a gravel pathway here as well. Just so we can have, you know, that walkability. Because someone would totally walk across that space in the real world, right? So hopefully they will do in cities as well. But we have a little tennis and swimming complex here. Again, lots of our favourite oakier looking trees are going to be great for tying this area together. We'll throw some down now as a general proof of concept. Some different trees in here as well. Occasional column now is always welcome, isn't it? It's also dying for a little bit of concrete brushing some places around here as well, isn't it? Where it needs to be tidied up a little bit. There we go. But again, just another nice little organic green space for Sims to enjoy. I'm going to be happy with this one on the corner, I think, looking into the downtown. Look how cool the yeah, cathedral looks in the skyline there as well. How nice is that? <laughs> it was really pretty. First time I really noticed that, actually. We didn't check it out on live stream last week from uh, this perspective, but... Uh, Big fan of that cathedral in the skyline there. Cool, so of course we'll refine angles and slopes we come into our detail in time maps, but happy with another sports complex to sit here as well. I really like that year's skyline. <laughs> it's so, so pretty to look at. Absolutely obsessed with just falling over it from various different angles. But either way, we'll now turn our attention towards these major green spaces at the front of the skyline. Anyway, we do have to be careful here, because there's no anything too dominant that's going to really detract from that skyline that we've been building over the last couple of episodes. So we'll start with this one here. So I really like what we've got going on with these pathways here, but let's just get rid of these for at the time being. So I want to kind of respect that star design that we were using in this particular grid. So I think we'll come in with pedestrian pathway. Uh, let's change it. Let's go for, I think we'll go for bluestone, I think. Yeah, let's do this one. So I want to link up corner to corner basically. Now this should be pretty much equidistant, that should be 20 units into the middle and 20 units over to that one. So once I've got my pedestrian pathways in I actually want to move the Sahil monument basically to in the middle of them and then set it to the same height. And then I just want to make a little roundabout um, around the base of them. That's going to be perfect. Now let's delete those inner roads. I'm going to grab all the nodes here as well, set everyone to this middle height I think should be acceptable. I'll have that about there. That's going to be not too bad. Then anything egg shaped that appears, uh, we can just use, move it to correct it of course. That's going to be good right there. Don't mind the little ascent there. I know we're sort of changing layers and heights around here. And of course we'll bring this a pedestrian area service point so it's not wind of no pedestrian areas but I think I'm going to be pretty happy with this African miniature monument and a centralised here. We can do lots of bench detail in our detail and time lapse. Get a few food stalls around this maybe. Flash out the park a little bit more. Perhaps we could upgrade the arms approaching into the central plaza space to be tree lined. Something like that. And then the ones coming from top to bottom to be grass lined. And where we do have this going on here. Uh, we want to shift this up, so let's stretch this node out first of all. And then we just want to shift green 
so it basically looks straight okay then we can do with the other same thing with the other ones as well if we need to although let's not go totally nuts on this intersection over here bring our green and blue back in a little bit and the same thing over here as well we don't want these being overly done I suppose just this one to be back a little bit and this one as well and we definitely don't want any traffic lights here either on these ones that have spawned in so uh, let's get rid of those let's also get a nicer tree as well something I guess we could do different trees on every approach couldn't we okay so this plaza is slowly coming together now looking pretty cute so I think what we are going to do is grab our keys here and I think we'll go with the city key since it's a little more designed and I want to join a section here and then down to yeah pretty much I think I'm gonna grab no controller and we're gonna narrow this down to about 60-ish percent I reckon should do it in this little corner here we'll drag it in and also set it to be the same height as this node over in the corner and then we'll drag this up here and we can blend this in with Probably a bit of brush will do quite nicely there. And then we'll bring this across into the corner. Bring it up so it's flush with that concrete and then set the height to be the same as the node. And then if all is well, we can just obviously grab these three nodes here as well. And then we will tell move it to mirror it to the other side. Where this one isn't happy, but a little kiss with node controller will turn them around. And then that should give us a little bit of a key banking in front of this plaza. Which will look really cool, I think, especially if we actually came in with a little bit of dirt here potentially we'll definitely need a brush but we'll explore the concept together anyway we'll just have a bit of dirt there instead of grass i think i'm certainly on board with that look how many people are just streaming out of this i definitely want to get the trams flowing actually while we're over here so i think now that we've completed this little plaza over here or at least to a point where it needs a detail in time lapse and we'll have a little look now at the configuration of the roads outside of the ferry terminal so we want metro here but i definitely want one of bad peanuts i think just because they're gorgeous so this one's probably gonna be a little bit wide is it yes absolutely enormous this one here is four tiles wide and we've got about four tiles to play with haven't we so if we're going to have a pedestrian service point over here and uh, we probably need to make that part of the skyline actually because there's going to be so many pedestrian roads over this way uh, let's go pedestrian road for it. Uh, we've used sandstone and bluestone today, so let's go for the hat trick and get cobblestone in here as well. There uh, we get this one. So it won't connect, but that's okay. We'll just bring it on the angle. Now we go to about there. And now bad peanut station should fit quite snugly on this. I think we'll configure it like so. So we're essentially just making like a larger, chunkier transport hub here, aren't we? So we've also got the bus lines in the middle of the ferry terminal. Also want to upgrade this junction here a little bit as well. I feel like that is not a particularly effective use of that node. So we'll move this one across for a little bit. We'll keep the one-way system going just for traffic purposes. And then what we will do here is actually feed in two separate uh, road nodes. It looks something like that is what we're trying to achieve and then just tell it to uh, turn around I actually wonder could this <laughs> could this node take another connection will it work I'm gonna freak out <laughs> it's not gonna be happy with this uh, we straighten everyone out and then use a bit of movie here to finagle our friends about yes we can and then node controller and a little bit of square for everyone push red back as well there we go, and we'll turn off our road crossings as well and do some custom crosswalks here. A little bit of IMT. That's going to be a really impressive entrance into that transport hub now, isn't it? Rather than having it sort of all boxed into that one little palm road we had. That's quite special, I'm a fan of that. Uh, desperate to see these trams, <laughs> let's go ahead and get them moving. Uh, so first of all we need to place the depot. I'm not entirely sure where the loop is going to complete itself yet, but... That is a problem for future egg once we come to build the transport hub uh, which again will probably be next episode i think so currently right now the tram line ends here uh, we might as well upgrade this into yeah we'll just go for this one we'll keep those cycle lanes going 
And that's going to make sense for trams to come up this way, isn't it? But I think we'll go for... Yeah, we do have that road that I would like. We are going to have the stadium here as well, so I'd like to keep the road hierarchy quite chunky if possible. We've got, like, the stadium build is going to be so cool, guys. Like, this whole area here. Uh, we're going to extend the... Well, or build the Adelaide Mall down this street and let it flow out into the hub where there'll also be the stadium and the transport hub itself. This is going to be an incredibly cool area of the downtown. I <laughs> really can't wait to get stuck into it. But either way, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, shall we? Let's uh, get the trams flowing first of all. Yeah, those bus lines should just pop back in when you're ready. And of course, yes again, I have got the directions confused playing with left-hand traffic. I will never, ever learn. Here we go. So where the tram stops on this road isn't overly important because that's going to change, of course, with the transit hub build. Uh, but we will start our line this way here. And then again, it doesn't need to come into the transit hub here because there's not actually many people using that, so just walking out here anyway. Uh, so then this will come all the way down. Uh, definitely stop here outside of the uh, main sort of square. Then again, there's so many people walking here, so we'll just say stop again in Morant Square now. That should be good. And okay, it would be nice to have the stop symmetry here. Ah, oh, we, we might do that. <laughs> we'll wait and see. Uh, stop again near the broadcast buildings and whatnot on the university stuff. Another block here. And then just complete that one there. Now from pictures on Google, the Adelaide trams are pretty lengthy numbers. They've got about five cars on them. I reckon that one is pretty much perfect, actually. And uh, we're going to make this a little red number as well. Cool. That's very special. I think there is actually quite a few Adelaide trams uh, on the workshop, which we might actually go grab one of them. I guess we'll see. Well, that's very nice, that now, isn't it? The way it goes. Oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> this is, look at that bus as well. Look at that. Look at that, everyone. So many sun hats, isn't there? Bloody hot day in Thessia and I. There are already people now eager to get on the tram system. It'd be interesting to see, actually, weren't it, just how much the tram system... Uh, siphons off of the buses because they're running pretty parallel with each other. If anything, yeah, they just happen to support one another. So we'll be, we'll, we'll see what happens with that, uh, where they converge. Be interesting to see. Uh, so now we have Metro in the city for the first time. So let's get a little underground perspective here. So there was a metro station built into the skyline in preparation for this, this little Japanese metro hub. And I would love to have this over here. Um, I think we might even do because we've only got one metro platform here why don't we consider the inclusion of another metro station in the form of potentially the modern train terminal i haven't used this asset yet and i probably won't have chance to use it in orchid bay and these are the last two cities one cities so i mean that's not too bad that's all right isn't it this was not expected i was thinking of a smaller platform but if we want to make this kind of a modular transit hub. Who, oh, it connects as well. <laughs> the elevated zoo path will definitely have to move to respect this design. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. That is the first definition, I think, of 11 secret herbs and spices. Absolutely gorgeous. I love that. Those stairs. How much of a difference do stairs make <laughs> to city skylines? Absolutely ludicrous, everyone. That's lovely. I'm really happy with that asset. And that is 100% staying. So let's move this across a little bit. Uh, let's delete these pathways here because they don't need to be in. Look how much use they get in. We'll definitely wrap them around the building and continue to just make them a lot of fun. Uh, so this will be fun, right? So what we're going to do with this is put it underground. Obviously, because it's underground metro. And I'm going to send this side to run toward the transit hub. And I imagine eventually into the Canberra area over here. Whereas this station is going to form a little bit of a grid support for Egerlade. So we're having metro convergence here between the two capital spaces. Plus the intercity connections and the bus. This transit hub with how walkable Thessia already is. Should be like insanely busy once it's all plugged in. But that is something to look forward to indeed everyone. I hope you're excited for that. So we'll meander this one right through the middle of Morant Square. And then it can hook into this one for right now. 
And again, once the rest of Egerlade and all of this area exists, those stations will be able to go somewhere else. And I reckon we'll feed this one off to the left to go this way. To link back up with the end of that one. Whilst this metro will go down into the Melbourne area, which I think is going to be a lot of marinas around here. Down this sort of place, a lot of expensive boats, nice apartments and whatnot. Which I think we will be heading to Melbourne for this area. So if you have any good shouts for relatively luxurious waterfronts in Melbourne, this is the episode to tell me about them so we can check them out when we come to build that. Cool, but that is both splendid and tremendous and now gives us the opportunity to have just two very basic metro lines running for the first time. We can definitely extend this one down here as well. We can 100% afford another underground metro stop here. Which, again, I haven't used this tiny little one either. And I think we are going to go for one of these tiny little Japanese stations and just make it part of our park. That's going to be quite cute, isn't it? And then I reckon we can get another one. Let's have a little find here, see what I'm possibly not considering. This is the underground metro stations from Plaza as well, isn't it? These ones are pretty nice, actually. I reckon, you know, actually, this would partner really nicely with the Museum of Modern Art, which is exactly where we're going to put it. Uh, let's go ahead and grab that Plaza's one again. That was going to tuck into that space perfectly. Oh my god, it is as well. That is a wonderful, if it sits, it fits. Right, even goes with the building. <laughs> oh, how amazing. Uh, can we repaint this? Should be able to. Uh, what colours are on the Museum of Modern Art? There's a lot of blue, isn't there? So can we change it to kind of a lighter blue? Yeah, sure. I guess we'll change the colour of it. It's a very subtle difference, but it's cute. So sure, we'll go for that then. So let's get all these stations tucked in there. Oh, I forgot. This one also has two lines as well, doesn't it? So that's even more interesting. So we're now starting to see that Metro support system form for Egerlade. Uh, we could actually use this as an excuse to form a metro line that heads down towards Valkyrie direction and probably hooks in with stations on this road eventually as well. But I don't want Valkyrie to have metro like it's a rural farm in town, but we can definitely send metro down to here. But where I think the airport is going to lie over this space here, I'm not sure where the airport's going yet. So again, but it would make sense to have metro coming down that way because we will be able to converge with the airport there too at some point. That is a very long way away though. Please do not get excited for Thessie's airport build yet. And then I guess for right now because the rest of Egerlade to the north here from our perspective doesn't actually exist yet. We can just have a nice big uh, happy curve just complete the loop at this point so we can run the metro in both directions. So we'll get both of that flowing. That is delicious. I absolutely love public transit planning. <laughs> it's so much fun. You know those little lines come together. Like crack, isn't it? So for the first time now, we should be able to see uh, what's going on. So I also wanted to reinstate these vanilla walking pathways around at the edge of this station as well, so not to shock them because they were incredibly busy. Got people coming out of that station already. So we'll do that here. Let's wrap them up and around. So it completes that texture and then turns that space into you know, what it should be, like actual walkable concrete space that people would use in the real world. I'll have this come across here and yeah, fold the pavement down too. And then we can make those connections where they do make sense, such as here and probably here as well. And so it's detailing potential in that, isn't there? We can get loads of nice assets in here. Trees, a couple of parks maybe. You know, keep respect to our green belt designs that we're looking at in Adelaide. Alongside what has essentially turned into another transit hub build. <laughs> Cannot get enough. Oh, what a delicious little space this has turned into. I've really enjoyed the addition of that metro plaza there. There's a bit of a shopping centre. Made this whole junction look so much more impressive, hasn't it? Uh, let's have a look at the tram lines actually, now they are moving around. There's a few on them, we've got 40 on one, couple starting to bunch up at the stops. Uh, this bus line is exceedingly busy isn't it? We've got 600 over here. God, <laughs> it's nuts isn't it? 
So when we send the trams down here, I'll tell you what, we, we should do that now, shouldn't we? Let's just see, just to see how the AI behaves. I'm pretty sure we'll all enjoy this together, won't we? Apologies about the quite broken nature of this edit as well, everyone. OBS has yet again been giving me grief. Um, I think we might finally have a fix now. It won't happen again, but I said that before, so hopefully not. So let's make this tram line turn around in the transit hub. And we'll see just how many that come out of the station prefer now to jump on the tram. It should be quite an interesting little AI experiment actually, just to see which indeed it does prefer. So it's also sent two more trams out on the line now to adjust for the new lamp. Still so many. That's more than three quarters, isn't it? That are heading into the bus over the trams. I wonder if that's just because it's the closest one. But the bus does cover more distance, actually. But either way, we're getting enormously distracted with Thessia's transport network. <laughs> like, we're really distracted. But uh, my goodness gracious, is it fun to watch. We'll, of course, make sure that this bridge actually comes back in as well to work properly. Absolutely wonderful, everyone. Tremendous amount of fun today playing with this. Well, so we are starting to drag on, so we do need to think head towards a detailing time lapse. And we kind of get the general idea now, right, with our major green spaces and what we're doing with them. I'm going to include a few more sports down here. And uh, there are some of them in Adelaide that are literally just grass and trees with some paths going through them, so we will respect that as well. Get some nice tree and bush detailing going along here. Uh, sort out my keys and get all this looking nice. Probably change the trees up in the middle of here as well, it seems a bit fancier. And just generally tie this space together, lots of prop details to do around the transit hub. As hopefully these spaces become more and more walkable as time goes on. But uh, a lot of fun. Let's get it detailed. And then we'll be right back.
Okay guys, let's have a little detailed review of what's happened here. So we'll just slowly pan over our areas here, and it's all came out really nicely. I uh, cannot suggest, or I guess recommend, the idea of surrounding your high density areas with just endless green belt. It's a lot of fun, and leads to some really interesting designs, I hope you all agree. But around our graveyard, we brought in some fencing and lots of trees in and around the graves. And there are plenty of people actually walking through the middle. Uh, here as well. Groundskeeper hut settled in really nicely into the graveyard. Uh, as did the service point as well to be honest. Uh, and then little gazebo in here as well with our car parking now fully operational. And a couple of gates on the ends of the pathways as well. And then we'll spill over the road into our swimming and tennis complex which has just been really tastefully detailed and this whole area doesn't feel overdone. It just feels pretty simplistic and exactly like it is in Adelaide. It's just paths and trees with the occasional Facility, I guess, is the best way to talk about this sort of area. Then we'll head down this road, which has been upgraded into bus road because there is buses coming down here. Uh, we've got a nice little node controlled configuration with our pathways and some bushes with some benches and whatnot. Uh, one of the new parks in here with the ponds and then a skate park too, uh, with more pathways all leading down to our metro system over here. Right, then we've got a cafe. It comes back up into more path networks with playgrounds and Lots of trees and this is the one I really wanted to leave just quite open and grassy and we did actually bring in a retaining wall key just to help kind of accentuate those layers that we're playing with in this map because you know this whole downtown is built on a massive hill and uh, you know a bit of retaining wall, a bit of no control as well just around the curve off that uh, really goes nicely on the street corner doesn't it adds a lot of layers to the build if you take that as a spice sample really happy with that and uh, then Around the front of our statue plaza, we've just got lots of colourful flowers in the dirt by the keys. Again, with that little retaining wall. Uh, some food stands, a couple of benches under trees in the open green space. But again, really wanting to leave that open green space. Can you imagine this is the sort of place where people would maybe sort of bring a towel and just chill out on the grass under the sun at the foot of the skyline here. Really cool. <laughs> really love that view there in particular. It's very nice, isn't it? So really cool. And then, yeah, this is super satisfying to watch as people walking around this little path roundabout here and to get into various different places. We've also got an Aussie football pitch here in this space as well. Now, don't forget to leave suggestions for Melbourne areas as well because we'll definitely take some inspiration for these areas uh, to be developed into something like that. But then as we come down, uh, we arrive at what is my favourite bit of today's build. <laughs> this whole transport hub turned out really nicely. Uh, we fused in one of King Leno's shopping mall assets onto the back of the Metro Mall building, whatever this one's called, with the stairs. And uh, what a happy fusing, right? We've also got pathways going through here as well, so people are actually walking uh, in and out of the side doors of the mall. There you go, you'll see another one go in there. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> I really love that. As this is really cool, turned out super nicely, more sort of you know, branding on the main street as well. Uh, and then we'll come around here into lots of path work and plazas, tons of trees and bench lining. We've got another Coco's out background here. We've also split the one-way network here to leave the main road first. So uh, people can actually enter the harbour this way if they need to. Uh, rather than having to go down the main road. Just a little one-way slip road for it. And this metro line isn't overly busy at the minute because it doesn't really go anywhere apart to the transport hub which is... Being totally serviced by our trams now that are running in both directions. So they're mirrored all the way around the city now. And I've also removed the bus stop from here and actually let it stop in the harbour itself because there was no one using this one. They were all walking out to grab the one on the street. So ended up removing it. And then we got more King Leno's assets over here. The elevated zoo path design continues as we also added in at the communication centre as a bit of a corner asset to help complete the transport hub. And it's just incredibly satisfying to watch. You've got some nice tasteful in-section marking tool action going on here again as well. A little bit of text pointing into the harbour. And just such a happy, cute, gorgeous, walkable space. We've got some planted detailing with benches and trees and toilets outside of our metro station. It's just, it's just great. <laughs> I really, really love building transport hubs, especially modded. It's just the ability to fuse and move things, rather than move it to combine buildings. You know, let's look at this for a little spice sample, right? What a wonderful little transport hub we put together today. I wasn't expecting to do this. This was supposed to just be green belt, but for <laughs> a transport hub. Uh, it turned out really nicely. I am uh, tremendously happy with uh, how it's all developed and settled in. And we now have Eggerly wrapped up with this huge green space. 
That will of course continue to have things built around it and we're going to do King's Garden over here in the hills. Or King's Park as I think it's called. A big stadium and transport hub build next episode which is going to be a ton of fun. I'll tell you what we will do while we're over here is just have a little reanalysis of how the AI is choosing to split. Buses are definitely less busy now because the trams are taking some of the weight off of them. But, uh, you know, this is only going to get busier as we bring more th things into it, especially the stadium as well. That's really going to kick up the walkability, isn't it? But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching and indeed your patience with my nasally voice. I'm sorry that I'm suffering with flu at the minute. I'm sure it's not amazing to listen to. i still try my hardest to get videos out alongside also having to fight with OBS, which has been an absolute pain in the arse this week, so... Apologies for what is probably a slightly choppier edit this week with me having to fight with OBS's frame drops. It looks like I do have a fix for it now, so hopefully that's the last we will ever hear of it. But really happy with today's build. This transport hub turned out really nicely and all the little green spaces are just super walkable and a really nice compliment to the Egalade district. And I hope it reinforces the point again, you know, of looking at Google Earth and not particularly going for a recreation, but just taking inspiration from something it can just lead to a totally different way of looking and building in cities tremendous amount of fun really enjoyed today's build please do enjoy your cinematics but i'll shut up and leave it there let's thank you all so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day Thank you.